Now, Eric Holder has been recorded telling people that it's his intention to brainwash the public about guns, to make them very afraid. Now, this next person we're talking to, Derek Poe of Golden Triangle Tactical in Beaumont, Texas, had that happen to him. In his store, in a mall, he had his gun taken away from him because people said they were terrified. They were afraid they were going to die just by seeing someone hold a gun. But this is also a case of First Amendment protection because as he moved to his new location and was advertising his store opening, he had that shut down in a manner similar to what happened to the InfoWars crew in Dallas. So this is both the First and the Second Amendment. We are not going to be put in the closet either as gun owners or as protesters. We have a right to be out in public to engage in these legal, constitutionally protected activities. And we want to talk to him and find out what happened in Houston. Now, you're moving locations from a mall, and this is your grand opening at the new location. Tell us why you left the mall. We left the mall right after they put the, uh, the 30 6 sign up on the door. We mainly left. We're not going to subject our employees and all our customers to unsafe working environment, which is what a gun-free zone is, which is what the mall became. Now, you had been hassled by the mall back in December 28th when they arrested you or gave you – actually, they, they confiscated your gun, didn't they? The police did. Well, they didn't arrest me at the time, but they did confiscate my gun. They didn't even – they didn't issue a citation, nothing. They just – all they did was stole my firearm. They said that you were carrying it in a manner calculated to alarm. You had it slung over your back, as you report? Right, yeah, slung over my back, the barrel facing down. I even had items in my hand. So it's it very clear and apparent that I wasn't going to do anything illegal, and I was wearing my work uniform for a tactical store in that very mall. Right, and so you've got a store in the mall. You're walking legally carrying, uh, openly carrying a, a uh, rifle that's slung over your back, and yet because some witnesses say that they are terrified, one of them said they thought they were going to die. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they called the police, and the police took your, took your weapon, and then the mall put up signs prohibiting uh, gun carry. Is that what you're saying with the 30 6 sign? Yes, sir. So they put up a 30 6 sign like a, a week later. Mm -hmm. So you decide that you're going to... So, so you decide that you're going to move to a location outside of the mall. You had your right. grand opening this last weekend, and you had somebody standing out by the road, as we see businesses doing all the time, with a sign waving to the location. In this particular instance, the guy was wearing a banana suit, and he had an AK-47 slung over his shoulder, which is legal. Right, yeah. And uh, we put him in a banana suit, figured uh, he'd look a little bit less alarming this time, you know. Right. <laughs> I don't know. Evidently, people were afraid of that as well, or the police were hassling it. Now, in between these two incidents, between the time that uh, you had the incident at the mall and between this incident with your grand opening this weekend, there was an open carry rally in Beaumont. Tell us about that. Yeah, there's, uh, there's one actually a week ago after after this open carry event and and it's funny because the cops were pretty mad at why he should be open carrying and that was one of the arguments i was making when i walked down there to help out my employee who's getting uh, illegally detained i say y'all helped us open carry a week ago you know and the cop was like it was basically saying that's different that's because we had police there and if you people just open carry it'd be like somalia is what he told me well, you know, what we saw when we went to an open carry rally at the Alamo in San Antonio was that at the rally, when there was about a thousand people there openly carrying, legally carrying firearms strapped over their back, the police stood their distance. They took pictures of everybody constantly, but they didn't harass anybody. But as soon as it dwindled down to just a few people left, most of the people had gone home. They started hassling gun owners again for open carry that is legal in Texas. Right. Yeah, it, it, it's, and it's also what we've seen here with this limitation of people standing off of the road. I don't know what the laws there are in Beaumont, but we've had a lot of problems in Dallas as well. We were up there protesting. The InfoWars crew was protesting the fact that they were trying to shut down free speech centered around the JFK 50th anniversary of the JFK assassination. They didn't want people really talking about it outside of their official dog and pony show, so they had a lot of free speech limitations that were based on this idea that you're going to distract traffic. And now Dallas has kind of doubled down on that. They now have a 75-foot setback from the road. 
Is your store even 75 feet back from the road? No, it's right along the main highway. Yeah, so you probably, in many cases, people, in a practical manner, they don't have that much of a setback anyway. But it's not any more distracting to have somebody standing out in front of a, a store waving a sign that the store is having a no, special or grand exactly. opening. They, they do it all the time. Several companies do it. There's a place called Liberty Tax. That's a woman dressed Statue of Liberty that does it. Mm -hmm. They have a, a mattress company that does it. Little Caesars, of course, does it. We did it. And what, of course, what happened with us, they cited us saying we broke a, a city violation. For, we're soliciting business alongside the road. Yeah, so it's selectively enforced. And we see this in places like Dallas. They typically only selectively enforce these setbacks with people who are alongside the road. They typically only enforce that when it's something that is politically unpopular. And that would be free speech protesting of something political or if somebody is exercising their Second Amendment rights openly. That's right. typically what now we're it, seeing. Is that what you're seeing? Me, are, are some of our people I thought were proponents of the Second Amendment have even been coming after me. I've been, I've been getting it from both sides. People that are proponents say, yeah, well, you're going to ruin it for the rest of us and blah, blah, blah. It's like, ruin it for the rest of us? How? It's already ruined for the rest of us. They say we can open carry, but when we do, this happens. How yeah. have I ruined it for anyone? I couldn't disagree with that attitude more. We have to get in their face. We have to stand up for our civil liberties. As Alex Jones has pointed out, Many times, this is like Rosa Parks refusing to get in the back of the bus. And, and this is like somebody criticizing you, a Second Amendment uh, supporter, a gun owner, criticizing you for doing this, for openly exercising your rights. If we don't push back against this, we are going to lose our rights. We've already got people who, I think many of these people who reported this were probably deathly afraid of seeing somebody with a gun because... The media and the government has been calculatedly reporting this in a manner ca to cause alarm, which is what they charged you with, carrying your, your firearm in a manner to cause alarm. They're reporting about firearms in a manner to cause alarm. So we have to push back against that. We have to exercise our rights or we're going to lose them. Exactly. I mean, it's ridiculous. How can I don't see how someone could be, if someone is carrying a non alarming wet manner and people call how the cops can arrest, if I see someone walking down the road with a pit bull, I don't necessarily like pit bulls, but I ain't going to call the police on them. And if I do, I doubt the cops will infringe on their liberties. That's their right to have, have that kind of breed of dog. So it should go the same way for a firearm. If somebody pisses their pants every time they see a gun, that's not the gun owner's problem. That's theirs. And maybe they should seek counseling. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, good luck on your uh, fight there. We hope to hear from you and find out how this is resolved. It's, it's truly amazing when we see the police and municipalities shutting down not only the First Amendment, but also the Second Amendment. And we need to understand some people don't like to see, some people who are conservatives don't like to see protesters out on the street. And some people who are protesting on the left, don't like to see people carrying firearms. We need to understand that we either get all of our freedoms recognized by the government or we'll have none of them recognized. And this is a good example of that, this particular case of yours. Exactly. Well, thank you for talking to us. Uh, good luck with your case. Derek Poe, Golden Triangle Tactical out of Beaumont, Texas. Thank you, Derek. Thank you. Well, that's exactly what they want to do. They want to try to get people afraid of guns by making it extremely rare to see anyone with a gun. They want gun owners in the closet. Well, you know what? We need to come out of the closet. We need to stand up for our constitutional rights. We need to proudly display that. And we're going to be covering this story as well as others like it at InfoWars. If you want to continue to follow the story, if you want to support the operation, get a subscription to Prison Planet TV. You can share it with up to 10 other people at the same time. It's a great way to keep abreast of what's happening, to get news that other people are not going to cover, and to inform your friends and family about these vital, important issues. If they take away the Second Amendment, they will take away the First Amendment, and they're doing both. Well, that's it for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern.
My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. 